Good night, good night, Madam Ross. How are you doing, girl? Pop. Good day, Shanna. Good night, Raquel. Good night, everybody. So bad. So how much more does it give <clears throat> for the sheep of this pasture? So bring on the burdens you Faith over fear. There you go. <laughs> That's a good word right there. Be not afraid, for it is I. Caesar, Rev, how are you doing, girl? SPAR. God bless. the touch and the new life
me may the difference for me
Give her brother a minute. All right. Yeah. Sherilyn Maloney. Tonight I'm going to drop another nun like Jesus. I'm not done. But I've made some beautiful detours. But tonight I'm getting back on the saddle. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Althea Marx Edwards, New Yorker. How are you doing, girl? How is Ozzy? The happy man. May God be the glory. again the boom is on and tonight we have uh, seven o'clock zoom and facebook live on dominion or dominion page bringing the unsearchable riches of the gospel of the kingdom of our lord jesus christ tonight minister nandiola crummy wing is going to be firing all on all pistons bringing her message loud and clear now everybody gets to preach what they want to preach as the lord will lead them and so night after night uh each speaker will just sit in their homes and read the scripture get their notes together and start firing we don't think that the time should be spent on netflix or just binging with food or sitting at home, you know, just being miserable and depressed, talking about COVID and all that stuff. We want to redeem the time. We want to buy up the time. We want to make the most of the time because at this moment in the history of the world, God, I repeat myself, is making the biggest altar call in the history of humanity. We have seen over 2 million people dying from this pandemic and we don't need to see another one and in the meantime if if we who are believers sit on our duff and do nothing but stay home and eat when this pandemic is over the next thing we will have is a lot of people dying from heart attack because the lifestyle for the last year has been very unhealthy for the most part and so you've got to watch yourself. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. He wants you to die. The thief cometh not but for to kill. That's his first option. He's not trying to send you to the hospital. He wants you dead and out of the way so he doesn't have to deal with you again. 
He comes to kill. That's his first priority. Then steal. Then destroy. And so we are not ignorant of his devices. And each individual has a different perspective, a different viewpoint, a different mannerism, a different way of approach, a different facial expression, a different way of ministering the gospel. But all of them have something to say. They're not just on this Zoom to say something or this lie to say something. They have something to say. And each of them in their own unique and distinct manner, both male and female, are going to bring the thunder and flash the lightning. And tonight, is I'm not uh, preaching as yet. We got eight preachers and seven nights. So, you know, what I do, I get started early and I get to yap my gums a little bit so that I don't get rusty over this week. Because <laughs> we got enough preachers in our... That, that's all of those people that will be speaking except for one of them in New York, Pastor Von der Gaspar. Everybody else the member of Dominion Ministries here in Canada. All of them go to our church. And uh, we got more ministers than that, but these are those that can come out and they have the time and they are not, uh, they are home from work. Some of them just got home from work, barely took a shower and went to sit down and get ready to rumble. We are saying one week, but I'm having a, a, a sneaky feeling that the Lord has other plans. But you never know until you know. Jesus, in his discourse with his disciples, I've started my preaching now. He said to them, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Reverend Gaspar is making our declaration, I am a member of Dominion Ministries. Your Dominion Ministry in New York. I have to come down there and, and, and dig out a church, sort of Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, uh, Manhattan, one of those places, and get going down there. I and the Father, Jesus said, are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The works that I do are the works that I have seen the Father doing. And how do you ask me, show us the Father? Oh, bless the Lord. And so, Jesus declared, I and the Father are one. And he demonstrates this oneness. In the priority of his authorship, he is the writer, the originator, the starter of the plan and program of salvation. We see the oneness in the priority of his authorship. We see the oneness in the fidelity of his friendship. We see the oneness in the reliability of his guardianship. We see the one, uh, oneness in the mastery of his workmanship, we see the oneness in the validity of his relationship. We see the oneness in the mercy of his mediatorship. We see the oneness in the glory of his creatorship. Each of these sentences that I just said there, uh, you, you, there's a whole sermon that can build. you can build on that. The priority of his authorship, the fidelity of his friendship, the reliability of his guardianship, the mastery of his workmanship, the validity of his relationship, the, the, the mercy of his mediatorship, and the glory of his creatorship. All of them are just mere bones that I'm throwing out there. And if you're a good builder, you can snatch the bones and set up the structure, the ribcage of the building, for we are lively stones that are built up a spiritual house. And if you're a preacher at all, you will know how to put them together and rock a shocker. <laughs> I haven't said that in a while. Yes. Talking about none like Jesus. There's nobody like him in terms of authorship. He wrote a book that indeed was six to six books. Bestseller in the world. Most loved book. Most hated book. Most quoted book. Most despised book. Most cared for book, most burned and reviled book. But he's the author of a book that is always the bestseller for the last 50 years. No one else can write a book of that nature and create an interest across the global scale like Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. The fidelity of his friendship. Uh, the songwriter says there's not a friend 
like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Another songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I just brought in my Catholic friends right there. I just brought in my Anglican friends right there. I just brought in my Methodist friends right there. And I just brought in all the people that are 50 and above. Because this younger generation of believers know nothing about the hymns of the faith. Oh, rock or shucker. We see the validity of his relationship, the mastery of his workmanship. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Ah, oh, enough of that. that. That can preach. The glory of his creatorship. I'm always amazed at the tone and color of black people. We have about seven different shades of black. And I was not even counting. I was in, uh, in Africa and I saw a woman there, tall, sleek, and black, but her black was bluish. I was shocked. I was staring at her like, whoa. People looking at me said, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not polite to stare. And then they said, there's an entire tribe of people that look like that, blackish blue. I thought, I thought she was a freak of nature. He said, they said, no, we have a tribe like that here. Stop staring. And so I didn't let them know I was theory. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Bless his holy name. And then, of course, you know, there are black people that are fairer than some people who are fair. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the glory of his creatorship. You can tell that God wants a variety of colors of people on the planet. Not one type, not one kind. In fact, when, uh, when Aaron got upset with Moses for marrying a black woman, God was going to... Uh, uh, his sister Miriam got offended too. God turned her lily white. And they had to wait for God to, uh, to have his servant Moses pray for his sister Miriam. While the whole nation of three million people were waiting in the desert. One racist in the ranks caused the whole nation to stop its progress. Many nations, wink wink, cannot make progress because there is always some race of people that assume that they are the dominant species. The smartest thing going on, and nobody else must get a chance to do anything but them. We're talking about not like Jesus, though. Christ expressed, he demonstrated with words, his lifestyle, and his deeds. Uh -huh. He expressed the friendly affinity of fatherly authority. He expressed the devout integrity of divine immutability. I am the Lord I change not. Jesus Christ the same, said the book of Hebrews. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, immutability, the unchanging one. The times cannot change the word of God. Ten popes come together and decide that the Bible is no longer relevant, does not change the word of God. Powers that be, wink, wink, on thrones of majesty for a short while, that fight the church and fight the word of God, cannot change the word of God. 40,000 apostles, 2 billion evangelists, and all these bishops and archbishops with their fancy robe and lousy lifestyle. None of them can change the word of God. I am the Lord. I change not. Glory to his name. Yes, we see the friendly affinity of fatherly authority. But we also see the devout integrity of divine immutability. We see the generous legacy of glorious liberality. There's nobody as liberal, as easy to get along with, and as ready to give like Jesus, the Son of God. We see the humble courtesy of holy constancy. He was constant, consistent, insistent, persistent, pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. We see the manifold ministry of majestic mercy, he said, oh, this woman, she's a rascal and a rogue. She's a vagabond and an adulteress. Moses said we should pelt bricks until she die. But we see Jesus demonstrated the sympathy, the manifold uh, ministry of majestic mercy. Even though they had caught her in the act, he preferred mercy to judgment. Are you feeling a brother? When Bartimaeus cried, he preferred mercy to judgment. Are you feeling a brother? When Peter had no taxes, he preferred mercy to to judgment. Oh, when the man had no more wine at his wedding, he preferred mercy than judgment. Are you feeling a brother? Are you feeling a brother? Oh, yes. We see the manifold ministry, the many-sided ministry of majestic mercy. 
We see the sympathy of a worthy man in Jesus Christ. We see the healthy sanctity of heavenly sincerity. Jesus was not a bluff. He was not a player. He was not a hypocrite. He was not a pretender. It was what it was. Sincerity comes from the word sinner, Sarah. Sinner, Sarah, sincerity. It means without wax, without wax. What are you talking about? Back in that time, when people were selling furniture, there was a particular place that had <clears throat> furniture of the highest order. And so it fetched a high price, but some rascals were able to rub wax on all furniture and make it shine as though it was new. And so they would sell it for the price of the original stuff when indeed and in fact it was a fake, it was a fraud, it was wax, it was the original photocopy. But there were some people who were wise after buying furniture from these waxed up furniture sellers and they would set it out in the sun. And when the heat of the sun started to penetrate the wax, the wax would start to peel and melt off from the furniture. And then the real age of the furniture would show and the cheap material that it was made of would be known to all and sundry. The furniture was insincere, meaning it was with wax. It was a fraudulent uh, duplicate of something that was genuine. It was waxed on, rubbed on with wax to give it that look as though it were something expensive. Without wax means sincere. You don't have to add anything to it. It can stand up by itself. Jesus could stand up by himself with healthy sincerity. He was not a fraud. He was not a fake. He was not a two-faced hypocrite. It was what it was. He told it like it was and went his merry way. We see in Christ that he expressed the manifest majesty of mediative mystery. There was a mystery about him. You couldn't tell what he was going to do next, whether he would spit in the mud and make eyes. You couldn't tell what he was going to do next, whether he would say, go and fish, and the fish had taxes in his mouth. You couldn't tell what he was going to do next. He would speak to a tree, and it would wither and die. You couldn't tell what he would do next. He let them sit down in companies of 50 and multiply the fish and the bread. You couldn't tell what he was going to do next. He turned ordinary water into vintage best tasting wine. Oh, glory to God. He was a man of mystery. Is not this the carpenter? He's a wine bibber. That fellow, he's a great healer. He's a wet water walker. This man talks to winds and waves. There was a mystery that they could not solve. Christ is mightiest in majesty. There is none like him. Christ is strongest in sovereignty. There is none like him. Christ is ablest in authority. None like Jesus. Christ is choicest in constancy. Chiefest in capability. Greatest in generosity. And stateliest in supremacy. There is none like him. He is, according to scripture, the very image of the invisible God. He, Jesus, reflected the light of life. He resembled the glory of God. He radiated the title of truth. He released the gifts of grace. He revealed the love of God. He realized the peace of purity. He received the honor of heaven. Oh yes, we see a threefold honor that he received from heaven. At his baptism, the voice of God honored him by saying to John the Baptist and to the crowd assembled, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased at the, at the baptism with John. We see uh, receiving honor from heaven at the time of his birth. The angels came and announced unto us a child is born, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. And we sing that during the month of December. Angels we have heard on high. Sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains. In reply echo back their joyous train. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest. The angel in a dream told Joseph. Fear not to take Mary. As I lawfully wedded wife. For that holy thing that shall be born. Shall be called the son of the highest. And so heavens honored him 
by angelic visitation, by angelic song, by angelic mystery, by angelic messages, by angelic glory. Oh, bless the Lord. He received the honor of heaven at birth. He received the honor of heaven at baptism. And then he received the honor of heaven at death. Oh, when he died, a Roman soldier made his confession and said, surely this man was the son of God. Ah, oh, when he died, the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. If it was torn from the bottom, you knew that man's hand had intervened. But when it was torn from top to bottom, you knew that this was an act of God. He received the honor of heaven in terms of the Roman soldier making his confession. He received the honor of heaven in terms of the veil in the temple being torn from the top to the bottom. He received the honor of heaven in view of the fact that the earth, with the, the, the sun refused to shine for three hours. There was total darkness, blackness so thick that men sat, in one, sat and stood in wonder and amazement with their hearts melting. They knew that this man was no ordinary man. The Roman made his confession and said, surely this man was the son of God. He died until the veil in the temple was rent to the top to the bottom. He died until the Roman soldier was so convicted that he made his confession. He died until the sun refused to shine for three and a half hours. He died until the graves of the saints opened up. And people saw graves opening everywhere. Not every grave, only the graves of the saints. He died until there was a violent earthquake that shook the earth around where the cross was. He died until the dead bodies of the saints came out from the graves that were opened up and were seen in Jerusalem for 40 days. Oh, I feel like preaching right now. Yes, he received the honor of heaven at birth. He received the honor of heaven at baptism. He received the honor of heaven at death. He received the honor of heaven in resurrection. He received the honor of heaven in ascension. He received the honor of heaven. He received the honor of heaven. He received the honor of heaven. Glory to God. The omnipotence of Christ cannot be overthrown. He is stink of power. Omnipotent. Full of power. All powerful. Nothing that he cannot do. The almightiness of Christ cannot be abolished. The immutability of Christ cannot be imperiled. Yes, the unchangeableness of Christ cannot be undermined. The covenant of Christ cannot be cancelled. The superiority of Christ cannot be superseded. There is none that can come above that. The faithfulness of Christ cannot be failing the dominion of christ cannot decline the kingdom of christ cannot crumble the purpose of christ cannot be paralyzed there are many who today are salivating knowing that they think they have the upper hand and now they're going to come against the church like a ton of bricks they're going to come against the preacher like a ton of bricks they're going to come against the word of god like a ton of bricks oh but let me tell you something we are in a kingdom that cannot be overthrown. We are in a kingdom that cannot crumble. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Every stink eye and every bad mouth, every evil wish and every negative prayer, every lying word and every glory stealer, every glory hider that tries to make you look like a con and a fraud, every shyster who now sits at ease in Zion, making a fat living off of the sheep, they hate the sheep, but they love the mutton. They hate the sheep, but they love the wool. They hate the sheep, but they love the cash they get from selling the sheep from the sheepfold. But there is one who said, I will build my church. He doesn't leave the building of the church to the apostle. He doesn't leave the building of the church to the prophet. He doesn't leave the building of the church to the pastor. He doesn't leave the building of the church to the evangelist. He doesn't leave the building of the church to the missionary. He takes it as his own personal responsibility. I will. He will. He will. He has decided that the church will be built. He has said in his word that cannot change. If this church is going to go up, I'm the one that's going to make it go up. And if the Lord is making it go up, there is no man that can bring it down. If the Lord is making it go up, there is no man that can stop his progress. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus said grow, nobody can keep it stagnant. No matter how they fight, no matter how they talk, no matter how they hate, no matter how they are bitter, they cannot stop the hand 
of the Almighty God. When Jehovah rises up as Jehovah Gabor to war on behalf of his saints, your arms are too short to box with God. God has remained the undisputed champion of the universe, never losing a fight, never losing a round, never losing in any nation, never losing in any continent, never losing in the heavens, never losing in the atmosphere, never losing in the earth, never losing under the earth, never losing on top of the sea, never losing below the sea. He has power in every realm. He has power in every description. He has power of every distinction. He has power in every continent. He has power on land, power on sea, power in the air, and power under the sea. There is no God of this sort that can do what he can do. I will build. I will build. Build means that there is consistent progress that's happening. Build means he is adding to it. Build means the power of multiplication is going. Build means... It's going to increase and become more. Build means it's getting bigger. Build means it's getting wider. Build means it's getting stronger. No man, no government, no system, nobody. With all the tricks that they have, with all the lies that they tell, with all the scandals that they start, with all the dirt that they throw, with all of their machination, with all of their manipulation, they can come together and stick together like glue. They can plan and, and try to bring that plan into fruition but there is a god who watches there is a god who knows there is a blood that was shed for the redemption of our sin there are angels with flaming swords of fire that encamp round about them that fear him and he will deliver them from evil for thine is the kingdom thine is the power thine is the glory forever and ever none can stop the growth of the church none can stop the spread of the gospel they have tried it before nero tried it and many great men of old that have tried it they have done their worst. They have said their best. They have lied like horses trot. And yet they were unable to stop the growth of the church. Because the one who said I will build it is unstoppable, unbeatable, invincible, unconquerable. To the glory of God, I shout the name Jesus. And then he said the gates of hell. The gates were the place of planning. The gates were the place of scheming. The gates were the place of plotting. The gates were the place of the elders. The gates were the place where the brainiacs of society will come together to plan the way forward. So when he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, he's not talking about the literal gates. He's talking about the strategies of hell. He's talking about the plans of hell, the schemes of hell. King about shall not prevail against it. What does shall not mean? Never, never, never. Ain't gonna happen. Can't stop the Lord. Can't beat the Lord. Can't stop the progress. Can't stop his church. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. Somebody shout me a good hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. The kingdom cannot crumble and the purposes of Christ cannot be paralyzed. Are you feeling a brother? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, glory to God. <clears throat> when you talk about him, he is a powerful savior. When you talk about him, he is a prevailing savior. When you talk about him, he is a precious savior. There is none like Jesus. Precious means rare, dear, and one of a kind. No one else called the dead back to life. No one else walked on the water like they were pavement. No one else uh, turned ordinary water into vintage wine. No one else said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. No one else cursed a tree and caused it to wither and die from the roots. No one else stilled the storm with the power of his word. Christ is in a class by himself. He's cut from a different cloth. There is nobody on par with him. Nobody that's in the same, in the same vicinity with him. No one in the same rank with him. He, outs, he outranks rank. He stops what cannot be stopped. And one of these days, Jesus is going to kill death and put death to death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The final enemy that shall be destroyed is death. He's a death killer and he's a water walker. He is a winemaker and he makes bread without flour, without yeast, without butter and all the other stuff that is made with. And he makes it instantaneously. And the crowd is so happy. They are so fed. They are so nourished that they come looking for him the next day because of the fish and bread that they got yesterday. Oh yes, he is a precious savior. He's rare, dear, one of a kind. He's a prevailing savior. None can stop him. He's a powerful savior. None can defend himself because when he says no, Nobody can say yes. The fountain of his fullness never fails. The reservoir of his resources never recedes. 
The wisdom of his word never wanes. The vigor of his virtue never varies. The burnish of his beauty never blemishes. The luster of his love never lessens. The prowess of his power never perishes. He is the head of the body. He got his headship by appointment, Mark 12 and 10. He got his headship by agreement, Colossians 2 and 9. He got his headship by arrangement, Ephesians 5 and 23. He got his headship by assignment, Ephesians 1, 21 to 23. He got his headship by attainment, Colossians 2 and 10. He got his headship by atonement, Colossians 1, 18 to 20. He got his headship by announcement, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Are you feeling a brother? He got his headship by appointment, agreement, arrangement, assignment, attainment, atonement, and announcement. Ain't nobody had a headship like that. Somebody shout hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Yes, to his name. Let's talk about his name. The songwriter says, what a lovely name, the name of Jesus, reaching high and far than the brightest star. Oh, yes, it's sweeter than the song they sing in heaven, evermore the same. What a lovely name. In his name, there's wondrous power, power to redeem, making sinners clean. Somebody shout unto God again. Oh, yes, to his name, there is no norm. There's no normalcy to this name. This name has incredible power in times when you really need a name that can shake the foundation of hell. Sometimes you really need a name that can break a curse. Sometimes you need a name that can soothe a crying child. Sometimes you need a name that will cast out a demon. Sometimes you need a name that will cause cancer to come out of people's throat and fall to the ground. Sometimes you need a name that can break a generational curse. Sometimes you need a name that can break a hex, break a vex, break a jinx, break a curse, break a spell. Sometimes you need a name that can drive the spirit of fear away. To his name, there is no norm. To his fame, there is no finality. To his claim, there is no confine. To his love, there is no limit. To his honor, there is no horizon. To his beauty, there is no boundary. To his truth, there is no terminus. To his mercy, there is no measure. There is none like Jesus. He is the bravest of the noble. His name and fame are global. He's the choicest of the stately. He is the highest of the heavenly. He's the greatest of the glorious and the purest of the righteous. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Jesus is the bright name and that name is full of light and life. Jesus is a sweet name. That name is full of the perfume of praise. Jesus is a heart name. That name is full of the music of love. Jesus is a rest name. That name is full of the purpose of peace. Jesus is the best name. That name is full of the treasures of truth. Jesus is a great name. That name is full of the wealth of wisdom. Jesus is a gift name. That name is full of the grace of God. There is no name like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. There is no curer like Jesus. There is no preacher like Jesus. There is no prophet like Jesus. There is no God like Jesus. There is no friend like Jesus. There is no brother like Jesus. There is no cook like Jesus. There is no fisherman like Jesus. None, none, none. There is none that raised the dead like Jesus. None came up from the grave like Jesus. None rebuked the devil like Jesus. None quelled a raging storm like Jesus. None! Christ is the racial king, according to Matthew 2 and 2, king of every race. Christ is the national king. According to John 1, 49, he came to his own, the Jew. Christ is the ecclesiastical king. According to Revelation 14, 3 and 4, he's the king of the church. Christ is a spiritual king. According to 1 Timothy 1 and 17, Christ is a celestial king. According to, four, uh, according to Daniel 4 and 37, Christ is the supernal king. According to Psalm 24, 7 and 8. Oh yes, he's king. He's king. He's king of the Jews. He's king of Israel. He's king of the saints. He's king of the ages. He's king of righteousness. He's king of peace. He's king of heaven. He's king of glory. He's king of kings. Oh yes, yes, yes. Not only is he king, but he's Lord as well. Ah, to his omniscience, there is no orbit. To his excellence, there is no end. To his sovereignty, there is no shoreline. To his lordship, there is no limitation. To his dominion, there is no demarcation. To his compassion, there is no circumference. 
To his blessing, there is no border. To his glory, there is no grave. There is no grave that can bury him. He outfoxed the fox, outdid Herod. He outsmarted death. He kicked the end out of death. And up from the grave, he arose. He defied gravity, rising up to go back to the place that he had come from. There is none like Jesus. No grave, the songwriter says, could hold his body down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes and yes. In transcendence, Christ surmounts all celebrities. In transcendence, Christ surmounts all celebrities. In resplendence, Christ supersedes all royalties. In magnificence, Christ excels all majesties. In effulgence, Christ eclipses all worthies. In valiance, Christ exceeds all deliverers. In excellence, Christ outvies all dignitaries. In endurance, Christ outshines all potentates. His name is greater. His claims are vaster. His fame is wiser. The plan of Christ is brighter. The might of Christ is stronger. The values of his victory are more virtuous. The legacies of his love are more lustrous. The gifts of his grace are more generous. The favors of his friendship are more famous. The pleasures of his promise are more precious. The words of his wisdom are more wondrous. There is none like him. His righteousness never recedes. His loving kindness never lessens. His faithfulness never fails. His comeliness never ceases. His delightfulness never dwindles. His preciousness never perishes. His steadfastness never subsides. His worthiness never wanes. No one precedes him. No one supersedes him. No one succeeds him. No one surpasses him. No one surmounts him. No one supplants him. No one supersedes him. Ain't nobody like him. Somebody shout yes, yes. None like Jesus. He's righteous in rule. None like Jesus. He's lustrous in love. None like Jesus. He's famous in fullness. Glorious in grace. Cautious in care. Precious in peace. Judicious in justice. Bounteous in blessing. There is none like him. He has the treasures of truth. He has the riches of righteousness. He has the legacies of love. He has the legion of lovers. He has the resources of redemption. He has the prerogatives of power. He has the mysteries of mercy. He has the purposes of peace. He has the wells of wisdom. He has the covenants of compassion. He has the realms of rest and the liberties of life. Ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody can do you like Jesus. Nobody can touch you like Jesus. Nobody can free you like Jesus. Nobody can save you like Jesus. Nobody can deliver you like Jesus. Nobody can change your life like Jesus. Nobody can cure you like Jesus. Nobody can bless you like Jesus. Nobody can hold you like Jesus. Nobody can be a friend like Jesus. Nobody can be a father like Jesus. Nobody can be a brother like Jesus. Nobody can be a mother like Jesus. Nobody can be a resurrector like Jesus. Nobody can be a preacher like Jesus. Nobody can be a teacher like Jesus. Nobody can be a joy giver like Jesus. Nobody can be a chain breaker like Jesus. Nobody can be a pain taker like Jesus. Nobody can be a resurrector like Jesus. None like him. Oh, rock a sucker. Ain't nobody like him. Hey, 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 hey. I feel a shiver in my liver. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I got three minutes more. Let me bring this thing to a close. And then I'll go change this shirt, put on something dry, and get back here with some music until 7 o'clock this time, 8 o'clock other times. And Sister Crummy Wing will come on with a word from God on Zoom and Dominion Facebook Live. Hey, 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 hey. Let me get back on my saddle. I'm about to land this plane. I'm circling the airport right now. I'm looking for my landing strip. Oh, yes. His love is unquestionable. You don't have to ask, does he love me? No, you know. He loves you to the point of going to the cross and shedding his blood and dying for you. I am to die for. Everywhere I go and preach that, people look at me funny like, what is he talking about? This guy is so full of arrogance. He is to die for, yes. And then I'll tell them, you too. And then they'll smile and say, oh, he caught us there. He caught us there. We are to die for. We are valuable to God, priceless to God. We are worth the life of a God. A God went and gave up the outward body, but the spirit didn't die. Don't tell me God died. The body that he used to, to bring the Christ, the anointing, to save man, that body died. But the real spirit man lived. I am he that liveth and was dead. The body that, behold, I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of hell and death. 
His love is unquestionable. That's why I don't suffer from low self-esteem. Nobody can make me feel less than. No, no. No sanki, no sing, sir. It's no God, sir. I am to die for, and Jesus proved it when he died for me. His love is unquestionable. His power is unconquerable. Its meaning, the meaning of his power and love is undeniable. Uh, its majesty is unexplainable. Uh, its sacrifice is incomparable. Glory. So somebody said, my darling Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. You're helping a brother preach. You're helping a brother preach. Yes. His sacrifice is incomparable. Yes. The price is unimaginable. That we are worth the life of a God. My landing lights are showing. My gears are down. My wheels are down. And I'm coming down uh, 50,000 feet. I'm down 30,000 feet. I'm down 20,000 feet. I'm coming in hot. <laughs> I'm coming in hot. Hi, Pastor Pam. How are you doing, girl? A brother sweating like a pig in the butcher shop up here. Do what you got to do. Bind and loose, cast out and, and rock a shocker down there to the glory of, hey, 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 of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes, let me start again. His love is unquestionable. The power of his love is unconquerable. The meaning of his love is undeniable. The majesty of his love is unexplainable. The sacrifice of his love is incomparable. The price of his love is unimaginable. The absence of his love is unthinkable. His potentialities are unpredictable. His prerogatives are unpronounceable. And the purposes of Christ are unpreventable. You can't stop him. They can't stop him. One of these days, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and the kingdoms of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and forever. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and death. Unto him be glory and honor and power and majesty and dominion forever and forever. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him with many crowns. Let the angels gravel their crowns and throw it at the feet of the master. And the many crowns, son of, the, of God, both the lion and lamb. Of zoology, the advocate and lawyer of criminology, the man with the keys to your penitentiary, the fresh loaf of bread from heaven's bakery, the best wine from heaven's brewery. There is none like him, none like him, none like him. Let God arise and the enemy be scattered. The boom is out. <laughs>